Fast bailing at 25 miles an hour is awesome, but what if I told you that with only one other mod, you could get twice as much done? How's it going, everybody? Driver53 here, and today I'm going to show you how you can use this mod right here. Yes, Mark Thor's Quick Bailer and one other mod to be able to get twice as much done. Yes, you are going to be able to do two rows at the same time. Don't believe me? There's two bales right there. They were produced side by side, came out at the exact same time. How are we doing it? Well, we're going to use this mod right here. This is the Lizard Tandem Series by Sir Vertex. This one right here is the Tandem Flex 39,000. Once you get them downloaded to find these, you're going to need to come down to Miscellaneous, and then you go all the way across to where your mods are. You've got a bunch of different options. The one we're going to focus on here in this video is the Tandem Flex 39,000. Now, wheel brand doesn't matter. Wheel setup doesn't matter. Decals, yes or no. Now, the rear couplings, this is an interesting one, okay? What I'm doing right now, I'm only using the single sides with long center, okay? And then if I go across, I get a double sides. So what that does, instead of just two points of connection, it's going to give me four. Really, really interesting here. We're only going to focus on the two. You can see them way up there at the top. When I go to the next one, you can see it adds another one down here on the bottom. I'm not worried about the ones in the middle. I only want the ones on the outside, and I want it to be a long central right there also. So once you get everything in the store, how are you going to transport it? Well, it's a little bit tricky with the balers, but once you get them out into the field, all you got to do is just hook them all up together. So pretty simple. You just back up to your equipment. Boom. You attach it right there. You start backing up. Now, even though it's got the crazy wheels on the back, it tends to go pretty straight. All right. So you're going to hook up here. Now, one really interesting thing, the balers. They, they pretty well stay in line. I haven't had a problem with them wanting to go all wonky whenever I'm hooking them up to the outsides. All right, so I'm just going to go boom right here. I'm showing you the overhead shot right now because what I want you to do is hold your R1 and then move your right analog stick right and left. All right, by going right, it's going to move it in. By going left, it's going to move it out. All right, so you can see that's how you adjust it. So you may get these and they be a little bit more towards the inside. All you got to do, move it to the outside and then you are good to go. Now, up in the top left-hand corner, you can see my icon up there in my HUD. What I need to do is turn these on, but it looks like I've only got one baler attached, all right? So what I need to do, go and hold my L1, and I'm going to hit my circle, and that's going to drop it down. I don't know if you could see, but it looks like I've got a shadow behind the other one, all right? But what I want to do now with this one, I'm going to go and turn it on. Now, you can really see that I've got another one behind there. So I need to go ahead and toggle over to the other one and do the exact same thing. Lower it down, and now I'm going to turn it on as well. Whenever the whole thing is blue, that means both balers are on, and they are lowered down, and you're good to go. Now, all you have to do is just start driving forward, and you're going to be able to pick up every bit of this straw in two rows. And the really awesome thing about this, it's going to go 25 miles an hour also. Now, I know it's going a little bit slower right now. It's all right. It's going to be fine, all right? It starts off doing that because of just the way that the quick bail itself works works it kind of has to figure out how much product it can handle before it really starts going crazy there on the speed but as you can see 25 miles an hour and we are picking up two rows at the same time now the only problem with this you can't hire a worker if i hit the circle button right now it's going to take me over to here and then that's it i i don't have an option but don't think you can only use this combination for picking up straw Yes, I've got hay right here as well. I don't have any wind rows though, but I do have a triple setup right here that is going to work the exact same way as the one that the double did. Because with these balers, you've got a little bit of a, uh, if, you, if you go all the way to the outside, you're, you're going to be missing a little bit right here in the middle. All right, so you put a third baler right here, and then you're good to go. And that's why it's important to go and get the one right here with a center attachment point as well all right i wanted a little bit longer so it's a little bit more in the back not a big deal if you end up getting the short one it's going to work fine too but this here allows just for a little bit easier transportation and turning and things like that all right so let me show you exactly how wide this swath is with just one baler all right so you can see right here that's all the wider that you're going to get and now with all three balers you can see we are much much wider than what you can see over on the right hand side of the screen once again, you don't need three. You could bring the other two in just a little bit more narrow, but you're not going to be picking up as much. And once again, there's a lot of material going into these balers, so it took a little bit longer to figure out exactly how fast it could go. 
But guys, this thing is going to be rocking here at 25 miles an hour very, very soon. Now, once again, you cannot work, you cannot use a worker with this, but you're saving time by not having to actually make windrows. So guys, what do you think? Is this a new setup that you're going to use on your farm? If so, let me know down in the comments below. Today, I'm going to show you how you could have a super massive wide plow that's going to go fast. And I mean, like really fast, guys. So the first thing that you're going to need is any semi truck or tractor that goes really, really fast. This instance right here, I've got the Winter Wolf by 82 Studios. For the plow, what are you going to need? It's going to be your John Deere 2410 by JA Modding. You're actually going to need two of these. And since you can't really change any configura configurations on them, just get them as they are. The next thing you're going to need are two of the draw bars. Now, these are by Anton ATL. These are the ADCO draw bars. They are the green and black thing right here in the middle. Um, I'm thinking probably any of the draw bars are going to work. I really like this one. It hasn't given me any problems at all. Once again, the draw bar by Anton ATL. Now, here's where the really awesome part of this combination comes in. You're going to need the tandem kit right here. This is called the Lizard Tandem Series. This is by Sir Vertex. And the first one that you're going to need is the 1300 V2 with three point attachers. And to find these in your shop, just go over to tools and then under miscellaneous, you're going to go across till you can see them. And once again, you're going to need the 1300 V2. They're only $10,000 base price. And the important part that you need to worry about right here on the rear couplings, you need to go across until it says three points. All right, now I'm not worried about the center part at all. I'm not going to be using that, but I went ahead and just got another three point here in the middle as well. So once again, you're going to need two of those. And then the last one that you need is the tandem 39,000. Now these things are going to take a little bit to get connected together. Just be patient with them. I would start with the back. All right, I would go ahead and uh, put your draw bar on it to this tandem piece right here. The 13,000 V2. I would go ahead and put that draw bar right here in there and then back it up to this kind of let that hang out by itself get the other one done too and then i would come in here with this uh 39,000 and connect it right there now it's time to unfold everything and go ahead and adjust it so what i want to do is go ahead and make sure that i'm back here on the very very far back piece of equipment i'm going to go ahead and just unfold right here you can see that the one on the right hand side of my screen is going ahead and unfolding I'm going to go ahead and hit triangle again till I can be highlighted on that rear section again. And I'm going to go ahead and unfold it as well. So you are going to have just a little bit of an overlap right here. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it except for, you know, right here. You want to make sure that you're all the way over as far right as you can on this adjustability point right here. And then on this one here, you can have this all the way over this way. Um, I, I really don't think you could flip it on backwards. Um, so just have it in the middle. Um, but even with this little bit of a overlap right now, I'm still plowing. It's, it's not an issue. I'm good to go. So basically just set your uh, plows down and then just take off. And as you can see, 25 miles an hour, the thing turns pretty, pretty well. I mean, it, it's not, it, it's, it's not exact, but it's fast. It's really fast, guys. I'm doing 33, 34, maybe miles an hour, a little bit uphill. I mean, I think in the right conditions, you could probably get this thing going 50, no problem. This is super fast. And and if you want to go ahead and create your own field, we'll, we'll check this out. I'm going to get over here where there's not going to be that option, right? I don't have a regular field already, already here. So what I'm going to do is just allow create fields. Perfect. And then I'm going to go to the other one and allow create fields. Also, now I am creating my own field. So if you're playing on new lands or you've got um, a no man's land, I mean, any of those maps like that, where you've got to create your own fields. I mean, I mean, why not? Why not guys? 20, I mean, 33, 34, 35 miles an hour here with this thing. And really all you need is three mods your john deere 2410 you need your lizard tandem series and you need your draw bar other than that just pick whatever tractor you want to use or whatever semi you want to use and you are going to be good to go
today i'm going to be showing you how to hook up four of these potato planters right here so you can get 24 meters wide and i think we might be going a little bit faster too the first mod you're going to need here today is the gl860 multi planter as you can see right here a base price is $129,500. the only customization you could do to it is color but guys there's some really really awesome colors here you can get a metallic red a really nice metallic blue metallic john deere or even metallic yellow like new holland the next mod you're going to need is the lizard tandem series you're going to need a couple different ones here first off let's go ahead and go across here to the right you're going to need the tandem flex 39,000. nothing crazy here on this one all you got to do is just make sure that you do have some uh, couplings on the rear you don't need to worry about your center point at all everything on this one is going to be happening out on the far outside edges so really you could just leave this thing exactly the way it is change your color if you'd like to down here you do have some really cool colors I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of blue. The next piece of equipment you're going to need out of this mod is the Tandem 15,000. You're going to need to make sure you get two of these. And it's a very important thing right here on the rear configurations that you come across here and you get the three points on the outside. The middle point, it doesn't really matter what you do there. But I mean, I just kind of get the thing out of the way. Maybe it leaves you a little bit more room to do something with. But the important part is make sure that you get your three points on the outside of the arms the next mod you're going to need is the adco draw bar this is by anton atl this is the one that i like the most right here configuration really i mean it all you got is design and you can either do the lower link balls or just standard i typically just do standard on this you do have some color options on this too some really light colors or a lot of your base stuff so let's go ahead and go with john deere yellow here now, there's a couple of really important things that you need to make sure you do before you actually start attaching all of this stuff together. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my help menu right here. And as you can see that I am now pressing my L1. And if I move my right analog stick left and right, I can move these attachment points out here. Now, I want to take this all the way out as far as it will go all the way to the right before I start attaching anything. It's going to give me the most amount of room. And then once I get them connected, then what I'm going to do is bring them back left and it's going to center, center them back up and make them really nice and tight together. But while I'm hooking everything up, I want these attachments all the way out here as far as they'll go. Here, let me zoom in right here and you guys can see exactly what's happening again. This right here is what I'm talking about. This movement right here, you want this all the way out to the far outside. So now what you're going to have to do is attach your four different ADCO draw bars. All right. So you can see right here, boom. There we go. Now, one important thing about this planter right here is that it is a pin style and not a ball style. So what that means that over here on your draw bar, this pin point needs to be directly in the middle as it is right now. You can also take this and move it over this way. It's going to give you a little bit more room. I don't advise that. Keep it right in the middle. Now, what you need to do is go ahead and start backing up to your two different planters that you've got right here. Now, if you buy them from the store and they're both sitting next to each other, it might be a really good idea just to kind of leave them right there and get this attached. Now, if you've got to take this out into a field to hook everything up because you don't have a whole lot of space, well, then you're going to just park them next to each other and attach it like this. All right. So you can see, boom, there we go. And this is going to attach right here to that pin location and it's dead center. That's going to help you be able to actually keep these things under a little bit better control. Like I said, there's going to be four of them. So you're going to put your other one right here. All right. Now this is your tandem 15,000. You're going to have two more planters and your other tandem 15,000 sitting right over here. Now we've got the tandem 39,000. Pretty simple. Hold your L1 and go left on your right analog stick. You're going to be able to lower that down. Now here you can see on the far outside, you do have your pin attachment points. They are already out as far as they will go. You hold your R1 and then you move right and left on your analog stick. Now this is going to actually move these in and out. All right. You can also go up and down, but that's not going to do anything for you. I haven't found anything at all that this does. So right here, that is what you need to control and bring this stuff either farther apart or closer together. Like I said, you're going to have three other planters back here. So now what you need to do is just get this attached right, right there. And you're going to be good to go. So another really important thing is kind of don't unfold this. I know it, you unfolded it, but you can also change the work mode of your wheels. Right now, it's got wheels that kind of want to do kind of whatever they want, right? They're moving around. You can see they're spinning everything like that. Well, if I go here and I hit X, 
now these things really start going crazy, right? And it's really hard to control what is going on with this thing. So you want to make sure that you keep these wheels locked in position, all right? That's going to make them function more like a single unit while you're trying to back this up, all right? So it is a little bit tricky. It might take you a couple tries, right? You might want to actually use a tractor where you can like kind of turn around and do it forwards. But once you get right here, boom, now you're attached. And you would want the other one sitting over here on the other side too. And let me show you exactly what that whole combo is going to look like. And that is going to be right here. As you can see, I've got one, two, three, four different planters. I've got one, two of the tandem 15,000s. Back here, I've got my draw bars. I've got four of them. We're hooked up in the center position. And then I've got my 39,000 right there. Now I'm using the TLX 9000 Winter Wolf right here because why not? This thing has a ton of horsepower. And I think it's going to be absolutely phenomenal to see how fast we can go here in this field. I've turned on the help menu now. And in the top left, you can see that I've got different icons up there for all these different pieces of equipment. Well, the interesting thing is since they're so far back there, it's kind of sees them all in the same location. And none of them are truly actually highlighted right now. So I've kind of got to play it a little bit by ear here. So what I'm going to do, hold my L1. Let's see if I can actually lower this down. Yes, I can. All right, perfect. So once you have it down, there's no actual way to turn it on. It's just already starting to put potatoes in the ground. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit triangle again. I can see that a little bit of a uh, color change up there happened. So now I'm going to go ahead and lower this one down as well. Well, that didn't do anything because I'm on a wait. All right, change it again. Now I can lower the planter. Perfect. That's number two that's down. Hit triangle again to switch to another one. That time I saw that a, 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 a different piece of equipment highlighted. So now, okay, we're back there. If I got this, nope, unfold weight. Hit triangle again. Look, now I can lower down another planter. So that's the green one. This takes a little bit to get, to get going. Believe me, it definitely does. Here, now we've got our fourth one. So now all four of our planters are in the ground and they're ready to start actually putting you know, product in the ground for us, make the ridges, and we're going to be good to go. So now all I have to do, I've got 96 miles an hour selected over on my cruise control. I'm going to go ahead, hit cruise, and let's see how fast this thing will actually go. Now, it's probably going to start off a little bit slow here in the beginning until it kind of gets ready and gets going. So we are doing good. We are tracking in a straight line. Look at that, 10 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour now, 12, 13 miles an hour, guys, at 24 four meters wide that is absolutely insane we're seeing 14 here a little bit and if we check our top speed here it says that it's only seven miles an hour for our working speed so not only are we going four times as wide guys we're going twice as fast 14 miles an hour at 24 meters wide this is absolutely insane eight times faster than if you're using a single one of these without the fast farming technique. Guys, this is definitely the way that you need to plant a field if you are looking to plant a big, big field and use that Colossus Harvester that Chris S. and Riley S. gave us for potatoes. This right here, it's, it's a perfect way to get your field set up if you're on console. That way you can, you can rock out and do all of those potato harvests. Now guys, I'm also gonna be looking at using this exact same setup whenever the expansion comes out, the premium expansion that we've got coming out here in November, I'm going to be looking at using this exact same setup or one very, very similar to it. And also I just want to say Ramius 613, part of the driver 53 R and D department. He's the one that sent this over to me guys. Thank him down in the comments below. Let him know that you greatly appreciate because I do. I greatly appreciate everything he has sent it over. He has got a lot of other really awesome ideas. He has been working a ton down in the lab, getting all these combinations set up for you guys. And once again, Rami is 613. Thank you very, very much, man. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. How's it going, everybody? Driver 53 here. And today I'm going to show you how you could have a 40 meter wide mower, baler, collector contraption here. Now, in reality, guys, I want to show you how to set up a 20-meter one because the 40-meter one here, it's awesome, but it doesn't go that fast at all. Here is the main part of this contraption. First, you're going to have the Lizard Tandem Series right here. This is the 39,000. To find it in your store, you're going to want to come down here to Miscellaneous, then go all the way across to where your tandems are at. You're going to want the Tandem Flex 39,000. 
Now, the one thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is right there in the middle, you want to make sure that you get a long central. All right, that's going to be very important for this co combination once you start adding a lot of other things onto it. All right, so if you buy it, just get it with it. it it's not going to cost you any extra money. Make sure you get the long center there in the middle. Next, you're going to want to get two of one of my favorite mods right here, the Snuffle Stuck. And to find it, you're going to need to come down here to Dollies, and then you're going to go across to your Snuffle Stuck. 7,500 bucks. You're going to want to make sure that you get the trailer hitch, okay, on the front hitch option. Make sure you get trailer hitch, all right? It's going to have a three-point on the back. It's going to be important. But on the front, trailer hitch. That's what you're going to want. And last but not least, you're going to want to make sure that your mowers are part of the ultimate mowing and bailing pack. The reason is because these things come with a three-point hitch that's going to attach your big winged section to your smaller middle section right here. To find both of these, come over to mowers in your store. Then you go across until you find right here. The Cavernland is what they're branded as, but it needs to say ultimate mowing and bailing pack down at the bottom. Once you get in here, you want to make sure that you leave this on your uh, Vario BX. All right. You want those uh, conveyors on the back of this because that's going to be important to be able to put this into a center uh, windrow as you're mowing. You definitely, definitely want those on there design that you could have the Vicon or the Converland. Either one does not matter here. Make whichever color you want. Now, the important part here is your rear hitch. All right, right now you can see that there is nothing on here at all. Whenever you go across, you can see that now you have a low ball hitch. You've got a low pin hitch. What we're interested in is the three point. Now it says a rear hitch three point. You only have one option for this. So make sure that is the one you get right here. You're gonna wanna get two of these. And over here on your front mower, you can select your Vicon or your Cavernland. Either one, no option here. It is as it is. You don't get to select anything on the attachment points. Just select the color you want and you are good to go. You're going to need two of this as well. Once you have all of your pieces from the store, you need to go ahead and start attaching everything together. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your snuffle stuck right here. Go ahead and attach it. And then you want to back up to your winged mower, all right? Now, this is the way that you want to attach this. Leave that three-point attachment for back there. You want this section right here, okay, where all the hoses and everything are at. This is the one that you want to attach right here. After you do that, back up to your other mower and connect it, and then you are good to go. Now, you can see that everything is up in the air now. So what I want to do is go ahead and start lowering everything down. All right. So I'm going to come up here to my winged section of the mower, the two wide parts, the blue ones that you see here. Whenever I hold my L1 and I want to lower the mower, I just hit circle. All right. Now it is down. It's going to do what I want it to do. Now I've got the back mower back here. So what I could do is actually lift the mower or lower the mower. So just lower it down. Pretty simple. It is going to be good to go. By using the snuffle stuck here, it lowers everything down right exactly where it needs to be. Now, you can use a tandem for this setup also, but I found that using the snuffle stuck here, it works just a little bit better, and it's a little bit less confusing on uh, some of the uh, the lowering points. Like when the tandem, you've got like upper and lower position. This one here, I don't have this at all. So this is your mower. It's going to be 10 meters wide, and if you want two of them, well, it's pretty simple. All you got to do, put your other one together and just set it right next to this. Now, let's go grab our tandem. So it's going to be pretty simple. All you have to do is just back up to your snuffle stucks now, and you want to have this all the way spread apart. If I hold my R1 and I go left and right on my joystick, the right R3, then it's pretty simple to move these things in and out. Now, I want to start with these all the way out here at the outside, and then what I'm going to do as I start mowing, I'm probably going to end up bringing them into somewhere right about in here. That way, the middle part of my mowers will actually touch. Now, this is going to give me a 20 meter mower. Then all you got to do is just go ahead and start lowering everything down and you can go ahead and turn them on as well. You can see up there in the icons, things are starting to lower down. They're getting turned blue. And then all I have to do is just shuffle back through until all of my items here are highlighted blue and they're lowered it down into that position now all i have to do is just start making my way around the map and i am going to go ahead and have two windrows right here now the awesome thing about this by using the tandem and the snuffle stuck guys this is going to go fast all right so we are going 18 
miles an hour. That is absolutely awesome here. 20 meters wide at 18 miles an hour. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my cruise now. And while I'm doing that, I need to just go back over to my tandem and I can separate these out just a little bit more to get me the absolute max spacing that I need. Now you can see there, I missed just a little bit there in the middle, but I adjusted it and brought it right back to where it needs to be. Now you may be wondering, how in the world do you get the balers behind it? And it's actually quite easy. All you need to do is hook up one snuffle stuck right here. You remember this middle section that I told you to keep long? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna need to do that because you're gonna put the first snuffle stuck right here, okay? By doing that, it's gonna go right here in this area. It's gonna interfere just a little bit, but it's gonna be fine. And then you're gonna attach another snuffle stuck to the back of this first one that's gonna go right through here. So just imagine this point right here is gonna go connected right there on that tandem. So you only need four snuffle stucks at that point. Then it gets you another tandem, 39,000 right here. And then just hook your bales to it. And then get them with the hitch. You're going to be able to put your trailer, whatever auto load you want, on the end of that. And that's going to be able to set you up two rows at the same time. You're going to be able to mow at 18 miles an hour. You're going to be able to bale it, turn it into silage bales, and auto load it all in one pass, guys. 20 meters wide, 18 miles an hour. That is insane. Absolutely a time saver. It takes a little bit to get together though. So what you want to do, bring your snuffle stocks, that set up right here, right in the middle. Then you want to bring these, attach them, kind of drive over from the side, get them lined up about where you can see here. And then you're just going to take your snuffle stock or your uh, tandem back up to all three, connect them. You may have to use another smaller trailer to help or tractor to help move things around a little bit to help massage it into place now i totally understand this is not a setup that you're going to be able to fold up and take from field to field this is one you leave in the field and yes if you want to make this thing super super wide 40 meters you're going to need four mower setups four balers four auto loads and you're going to need three more tandems to hook up in the front so once again hook a tandem up so it's going to be here one wing attached there you're going to set up your other setup over here. Your tandem is going to be there. And then one tandem right in the middle to connect anything together. If you want to see exactly how that is. Go back to the first part of the video where I've got everything hooked up together. You can see that very, very well. Now, one really awesome thing about this setup is, yes, you are going to be able to hire workers. But I would be very, very cautious about it. Because when you get to the end of the field, they uh, they don't like to turn around very easy at all. It um. It's like a big old train wreck. You know what I mean? Like everything's on top of each other. It's gnarly. I just, I wouldn't do it. Use this setup. If you're wanting to drive around and make turns yourself while mowing or, or you could just go back and forth on the turns, um, do that yourself and let the worker do the long sections by themselves solo. So it goes perfectly straight and then you're good. Now you absolutely can do it this way too, where you just mow really fast. And then you come back with a double baler setup that we showed in a previous video, do that. And then you can just pick both of them up at the same time and you're good to go there. Who's interested in a sugarcane harvesting combo that holds 3 million liters. How's it going everybody driver 53 here. And today I'm going to show you how you can create this unique combination. That's going to be a sugar beet poplar and regular corn chaff. Um, harvester that's going to hold 3 million liter capacity for you. So you're going to be able to stay out in the field quite a long time before you have to head back over to wherever you're putting your chaff or your sugar cane or your wood chips. The first mod you're going to need is the 53 drop deck trailer auto load bales. Now this is by Mac trucker 921 and it comes in a lot of different configurations. And to find this in your store, go to trailers and then go all the way across where all your mods are at. You want to find the 53 drop deck trailer auto load bales. Now there are different sizes by Max Trucker 921. This one right here to get this capacity, you need the one that is the 53 footer. Now here under body configuration, you need to start going over to the left until you get out of the liquid tanks. The tipper body unrealistic four is your 1 million liter capacity. If you don't want that much. Oh, you could just go left. You got 750 or 500,000 or 250. Right, but we want the 1 million liter capacity. 
Everything else you can adjust any way you like to. Um, you don't really need any additional rear hitches because this is going to be just side by side with each other. So don't worry about that. But go all the way down, configure it how you want it, and then go ahead and make sure you get three of these. Next, you're going to need to go ahead and pick up any dolly that you like. We are using the snuffle stuck right here because it's a very versatile piece of equipment on the farm. We've got the three point here on the back. But so I like this one. Make sure you get three of it as well. Now, to join all three of these together, you're going to need the Lizard Tandem Series Pack. This is by Sir Vertex. And to find it into the store, you need to come down here to Miscellaneous, go all the way across, and then you're going to pick the 15,000 one right here. Now, one thing that I have done on the standard with long central, my rear couplings, I went ahead and just made this a short central part, okay? It, it's going to make it as close to equal that I can here. It is going to put it just a little bit farther back, but if I leave it like that right there, then it really pushes that middle trailer a little bit farther, too far back for what I like. So I just want to make sure that it is on the short. Everything else, set it up however you like. For the forage harvester, pick whichever one you like. Just make sure it's got quite a bit of horsepower. And the most important part of this is going to be the header. This is the Collect 900 for sugar cane and poplar. To find this in the store, go to Forage Harvester Headers. Go all the way across, and you can see that you have three different ones. You've got your regular sugar cane header, you've got a poplar header, and you have just a regular chaff header as well. We're going to take a look at the sugar cane one right here. All you have for customization is your color options. Nine meters wide, six miles an hour. Not super fast, but you do get to do sugar cane or with this one here, your poplar, which is a lot better than the standard one or two meters wide that you do with a regular header of those crops. With this thing all together, it's going to be pretty simple. You got to have your trailer and your snuffle stuck or your dolly hooked together, stack them all side by side, really, really close, and then back your tandem up to it until they all touch. Now, one thing that might be a little bit of a trick is the attachment points for the actual tandem. All right. So you can see right there that the snuffle stuck is attaching in the middle and then on the two outside edges. If it's not lining up exactly where you need it to, hold your L1 and go left and right on your right analog stick. You can see that right there, that uh, uh, hitch point is actually moving in and out. Now, the reason I can do that is because this thing is fully adjustable. So if I want these things to be really, really close together, I can do that. Or if I need to bring them farther apart, I can do that too. Now, since you're playing unrealistically, it may not be a, a factor and you have your crop destruction turned off. If you have your crop destruction turned on, you might want to use a different dolly here because the wheels are pretty wide on this one and you need one that's going to be a little bit more narrow that way you're not going to be crushing your crop as you're pulling this through your harvest as you're harvesting and then it's pretty simple all you have to do is come up to the edge of your field here go ahead and lower it down you've got to make sure you unfold your pipe as well and then just start harvesting it's pretty simple this pipe is going to find the closest trailer for you and it's going to start filling and you're not going to have any problem. You're going to be able to harvest a ton, ton of acreage here or hectares. And then once that's done, then you can unhook them and transport them where you need to. Or if you got some really wide roads on your map, then just go ahead and keep hauling it just like this. Now, if you do need to be able to haul these uh, in a straight line behind a piece of equipment, your tandem here does not fold. All right. So it is going to be a super wide piece of equipment. Keep that in mind. But everything else, if you got a trailer hitch on the back of these trailers, then you're not going to have a problem. You can uh, hook them all up in a row, and then you are going to be good to go to get to your field and start doing this with only one piece of equipment. I personally think that you probably got to go off-road with this thing because it is pretty wide. But guys, think about it. You're going nine meters wide on a sugar cane here. Typically, sugarcane is only what, like one meter, maybe two meters wide if you get the uh, the Jacko mod. So this is a really, really awesome step up there. Yes, it's only seven miles an hour, but you're going to be able to do this entire field without stopping. I mean, you might even run out of gas. Now, the reason you need the different headers is because you got different crops. So we're going to come out of the sugarcane right here. I've got poplars sitting right here next to it. Let's go ahead and go straight into this and see if it will cut. And no. No, it's not going to cut because this is my sugar cane header. I have to make sure that I have my poplar header if I want to harvest my poplars or my regular corn chaff. They are only going to harvest one crop, and that's the one that's listed in the store for which one you need to buy. Remember, 
you've got the sugar cane, you've got the poplar, and then you've got the regular. Now, the last thing that I want to go over here is can you use a worker? And I don't really recommend it. It gets down to the end. And since you've got so many different um, um, uh, pivot points here in this combination, it really doesn't know exactly what it wants to do. It tries to back up. It gets kind of jackknifed a little bit. And then it like pulls straight and it goes off in a completely different direction. So I do not recommend using a worker with this setup. Just go ahead and do it all yourself. But guys, it's not going to take very long at all. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed the video or learned something today, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you would. If you want to stay up to date on all my future testing and tips and tricks videos here on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell too. And while you're waiting on those future videos, go and check out one of these two right here. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53 signing off.